Okay, so the first stage is to mill the T nut stock shape. So I want to mill this section out of here, leaving the narrow section in the middle. So we'll set up on XYZ0 in that back left corner. And we'll take some passes along here and some passes along the front. So let's just go through and put the fields in because there's a few little uh, points that are worth noting here. Um, okay, we're going to call the file T nut mill G54 standard offset. It's tool number two, that's an 8mm tool. It's already been set in the tool table. Spindle RPM 3000. Enter. As a nice little warning here, if you had the spindle range on low and you entered 3000, it would go red and warn you. And so if you click on the status, it'll explain why invalid RPM setting. Okay, so that's really nice little touch. So we need to set the spindle speed on the high range for 3000 RPM. Feed rate. Well, in metric, this is all in metric, say a thousand uh, millimeters a minute, that's about 40 inches or something. Z feed rate 60 is okay, four millimeters clear is okay. Okay, so we're, we'll start from this corner and work around clockwise. X start zero, profile start also zero. Remember the cutter or diameter will take care of the cutter offset before it enters depth of cut to start the pass, so you don't need to worry about that. Uh, no want a radius in this case. Profile end, okay we're going in a positive direction and it's 180 long so let's just give it another millimeter um, to make sure it's not stopping and still cutting 181 into there. Now we're on the coming from the back and the Y axis. Um, the first cut, okay a little bit of maths here just got a sketch here to show the stock is 29 millimeters wide, the middle rib is 14.9, so we've got two cutouts of 7.05. Okay, so we're just going enter minus 7.05 in that direction. Then it's traveling across plus 14.9, so that's minus uh, 21.95. Uh, Nine five. Enter, and y end is the full width of the stock, which is minus twenty nine millimeters. Enter. Okay, the z's. This is a little bit confusing for me, and I had to get it wrong a couple of times first. You need to enter the depth as a minus value. So I want to go eleven millimeters deep. So I need to enter eleven millimeters deep. Uh, otherwise, it. That's just the language it needs. This is um, DOC, ZDOC, depth of cut. Well, it's, I thought maybe we could do it in two passes of, say, 5.5. You don't enter that as a minus value, though. So it's a little bit confusing there. Okay, Z start. We're going to make it starting on zero. Uh, step over. Well, let's give it a... You know, you could you could take several cuts, say a millimetre deep cuts, but it's probably better to use the cutter on the side. So we're going to give it two 5.5 deep cuts to get to the 11. Uh, so we need a fairly uh, gentle step over. Uh, if you enter the amount there, rather than a percentage of the cutter. So maybe uh, one point, I don't know, 1.3 millimetres. That's your step over. Okay, so all the fields have been entered. Um, we've called it something. Um, we can prepare a file. Um, it's called, let's start up a new folder. And we'll call it um, Path Pilot Review. Okay. Uh, it should come up here. Okay, there we are, path pilot review. So just go back a step and you can see where you're in. Uh, if I go in here, I'll see my NC programs. Click on that, workshop, path pilot review. Now you actually have to open that file, as I understand it, then go to your conversational 
then go post to file. Got that wrong, didn't I? It automatically pops up for you. So you open it there. Okay, Path Pilot Review is now open. So to enter it, you just save it in there. And now we have um, the file loaded and it's there in the graphics and the display. You can put it in isometric or top view. So we're ready to go. So the plan is now to run that code um, and move on to the next one. Okay, so just briefly, I won't bother running the uh, videoing the machine running. It's just noisy and it's a straightforward process. That code went really well. Cut the part out. There's the cutter, 8mm cutter. Uh, no problems there. Okay, let's just go quickly through the drilling conversational. This is going to be drilling um, the second size, the 10.5 uh, tapping size hole. Although we won't be tapping, we'll be thread milling, um, same sort of size drill. Um, I won't waste video time with going through the pilot section because this pilot drill section uh, I used a um, stub drill to drill the pilot holes. Um, but this one will run right on into the thread milling, so um, we'll just do this conversational on the drilling. So, okay, let's call this T nut drill. G54 tool number um, 4. It's early in the morning now and my brain is sluggish. Okay, so we're in uh, low spindle speed range. Now we've got the bigger drill in there. Um, probably want to run that at about 900 or something. Um, feed rate. Okay, it's, it's being taken care of um, by the Z feed rate. There's no F feed rate and um, a Z feed rate of probably about 90 millimeters a minute. Z clear for. Okay, now the positions, you just enter here. So the first position is from zero is in 15 millimeters. And the second position is Y back across, halfway across the T nut block at 14.5. It's all pretty simple stuff. And then just enter all the other holes. Um, here, if you want to choose between one type of uh, drill cycle and another, um, if you enter, enter a peck amount, uh, then you don't need to enter a dwell amount, because this is the G... Uh, I haven't got it in the top of my head, but I always use pecking to, to clear the swarf, um, and quite a small peck, so I can let the machine run and go into another room, not worry about chips coming off. So I put in a peck 0.5 there, um, and um, zero start, depth of 25 millimeters. Okay, so that's all ready to go, and then you can go post to file, um, save it to your file. Okay, moving straight on to thread milling. So you've set up all the hole positions and drilling positions and produced the code for the drilling, and then you go straight on to thread milling because the thread milling conversational doesn't give hole positions. It needs to pick up on that previous code you've done uh, for the hole positions. This really just sets the parameters for the thread milling. So, okay, we're calling that thread mill, say, 2000 RPM because it's a carbide cutter. Feed rate 300, Z clear 4, internal or external, so I'm internal in this case. Um, you can select your thread type um, here if it's a standard thread. Of course, the beauty of thread milling is you can put in any thread or pitch you like. Um, so that automatically, this is a 12mm thread, so that automatically loads uh, the major diameter and the minor diameter. Seems like a big diameter for a minor diameter, but I guess that's correct. Um, and um, the threads and pitch, well this is in metrics, 
so it's a little bit superfluous but if it was an imperial you would enter the threads per inch here and as it's in metric and you would enter it here so if it was if it was one millimeter pitch then you would get one thread per millimeter so if you were an inch that would be a little bit more sensible anyway that's setting that uh, that automatically sets if you select it according to no it doesn't okay 1.75 is the pitch here for 12 millimeters and that is 0.6 of a thread per millimeter so that was a little bit confusing for me initially okay we set the Z depth at minus 27 start at 0 um, post to file and that piggybacks on the back of your drilling code so if we open that up uh, that's it there now we have the drilling code there you can see uh, a front view shows the helix and the drill holes if we go to file and go edit G code you can see down here at the top of the code is the drilling program and going down a bit you can see the helical milling program pass one pass two pass three and so on back to pass one so I only used uh, three passes there oh, just going back briefly to the conversational I didn't mention the depth of cut so and uh, you can enter the number of passes here I think I used three when I did it and that automatically gives you the depth of cut the depth of cut is nicely proportioned so that it reduces as you go deeper because of the actual area of the tool is in deeper um, and that's that's handy and it only cuts off the bottom face of the uh, cutter uh, which is less load for the machining process all right that's it I think